There we go. It's pretty interesting, that the honesty of children, because that one that says his dad is his best because he fixes the car was funny, but when he added a lot, I'm like, are you sure your dad's a mechanic, you know? <laughs> So it is great to be with you guys here today in the middle of winter almost. I cannot believe we're already in June again. And I am so looking forward to kicking off a brand new series. But I have to mention the last series we did on the judges, the Hidden Heroes. What a phenomenal series. I think we've learned a lot of things that we didn't know. And one of the things I learned is, women, you are vicious in the Old Testament. I mean, the one lady with a ten pig to a, ten pig to a guy and hammering it in, the, the, with King Abimelech, where the woman took a, a stone and threw it down and smashed the guy's head in. Delilah, I'm like, wow, I'm so glad we're living in the New Testament times and not in the Old Testament times. And I know it's Father's Day next week, so we, I know we're going to see your kinder side. We are starting a brand new series called Circles. And I don't know if you've noticed as you come into this door, you will see there was a big circle logo with a bunch of people under it. And this three weeks, we want to speak a little bit about friendship. But we want to talk about your inner circle, your circle of influence, and actually how to make that circle bigger. And that song keeps coming up in my mind. I don't know if you've ever heard it. It's a horrible song. And now it's an earworm, so please try to get it out of your head as I'm preaching. I will not sing it. I want to talk about that today. You see, our, our vision for 2022 for our churches is to have community more, to have spend more time with friendship and so forth. But we've seen in the world that actually post-COVID, people are more lonelier, we're more online, we more have friendships, that's not really friendships. And the, the verse that we, want, we shared in the beginning of the year, I want to share with you guys again, it says this in Acts 2, verse 46 to 47. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple. They broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day, the Lord added to their numbers for those who are being saved. That was the vision for this year. And this year, I want to give you some stats before we get into the sermon. Um, first of all, we need to know, we have this year, we have 40 circles running weekly basis or bi-weekly basis. In that 40 circles, we have only over 380 people committed to circles bi-weekly, and over 400 souls are visiting or joining circles on a monthly basis, going to circles on a monthly basis. I mean, that is phenomenal. Can we just give God just what he's done in the small group area? I mean, 400 people that visit the circle on a monthly basis, I mean, that is just something God can do, and he's adding to it daily, so much so that we still have this good problem, that we have still people, believe it or not, on a waiting list, and we, we just don't have enough leaders yet. But I know that we're going to put them in circles soon because we have four new circles opening up this week. So, been a phenomenal journey, and I'm looking forward to it. But it made me ask a question. Who is your friend? Who is in your inner circle if you even have something like that? You know, the person you can go to, good or bad times. A person that you can share your whole life with. And I want to put your husbands and wives aside now for this one. So please, I know that your husband must be your best friend. And my, the wife must say, my husband's my best friend and, and God is the only one I speak to. I, I'm not talking about that today. That's not the point. I want to ask you, who is holding you up when you're feeling down? Who do you trust with everything you have? And I've seen it. what has happened in the world is that we've changed a little bit how our friendships looks like. You know, Proverbs 17, verse 17, the FPV version says, A friend is someone you may or may not know well that accepts your friend request on Facebook. This person is born to like and comment on your post to make you feel good about yourself. Now, some of your Bible scholars here are like, what is this Bible that Louis is talking about? If you want to get it, it's called the Facebook version of Proverbs 17, verse 17. I'm going to share the real one now, but this is what our world has become. Our world has become Facebook and social media driven, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, WeChat, Telegram, WhatsApp. And we don't have that physical communication anymore. Now, when I prayed for the sermon, I went to Mug and Bean. And I thought, let me just see what people do at Mug and Bean while I was prepping for the sermon. And I was astonished to see for the hour or two I've been there that people would sit down and the first thing they do is they take out their phone with their friend present and then they show each other what they've seen and then they bestie photo at Mug and Bean and they're always on their phone. 
And I'm not talking about the young generation, the young adult generation. I'm talking about the 50, 60 year old ladies doing that. Yeah, exactly. I was shocked as you are shocked here, Monica. This is what happened. We look at TikToks consistently. I have never seen a bigger time waster than TikTok. Am I right? I know because I'm on TikTok and I see who watches my stuff. That's how I know. Some of the young adults even shared it on a constant basis, apparently. But I want to ask you, how many friends do you have that's in your inner circle? You know, Facebook and Instagram and social media and so forth is such a fake sense of friendship. Because you have, maybe have thousands of friends on Facebook, thousands of followers. I don't know why I would say followers, but thousands of followers on TikTok and Instagram. And I want to ask you, how many of you met for coffee from those friends list this week? How many of you shared a meal with those people in the week? Let me get a bit more intense. If you had to die today, how many of those people will come to your funeral? Or would they just say condolences to the family? And this is the problem I think Jesus was try- is trying to tell us this year. This is, the, this is the reason why we do these three, there is three weeks of circles. Is who do you have time with friends? Do you have time for friendships? And we've made friendships out to be everything is good, but as soon as there's negative energy in the life, I was, you know what people say to me? I don't need that negativity now in my life, so I'm going to block you as a friend. I, not my circus, not my monkeys. Remember I said that before? It is your circus, it is your monkey because it's your friend. But we block people out. And the reason I believe anxiety and depression is so rife in this world is because Christians have modeled the same friendship levels as the world does. So Christians would say, I am there for you, but as soon as something happens that influences my lifestyle, I block you out. I can't deal with this right now. I did a social experiment. Sorry, I, I get very excited when this happens. So sorry, online guys, if you get a little bit woohoo. But what I've done is I've done a social experiment on Facebook. I shared a Facebook post where I said, you know what? I've learned something today. When a friend, the friend who's always trying to make you feel inclusive or happy or wants to make you laugh is normally the friend who is having depression or some sort of anxiety. And the lesson I've learned is rather spend time with this person because it's way more valuable than our hectic lifestyles. And not a lot of people have shared it or liked it. Two people phoned me and they were worried, am I okay? It was a social experiment. I'm sorry if I did that. But then I posted also a 21.1K ran, run I did. A day or two, I think a week or two afterwards, I can't remember the timeline. And I got so many more likes and shares. And yet I was thinking, this is exactly the problem we as Christians are facing. We would share in your victory, but we won't follow you or help you in your despair. And this brings me to my question today. Who is in your inner circle? Who are you talking with when you have not a good day or a good time? Because Proverbs 17 verse 17, here's the correct verse. A friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for a time of adversity. Now, sisters, this includes you also. You're not off the hook. Wouldn't it be amazing to have five or six friends that you can share everything with? Wouldn't it be great to have two or three men or women in your life that prays for you, that spends time with you, That you can phone two o'clock in the morning when you're completely drunk out of your mind and you feel that you want to punch another guy at the nightclub or whatever to come and fetch me. Wouldn't it be great to have a friend, a Christian friend like that who can pick you up, not judge and condemn you for your drinking or whatever, but to be there for you. But I know what we do as Christians. We look at the phone and we what? I don't think I'm going to answer this one. And you, you know it's correct. It's what we do. And I can testify to this. I do this also. I would look at the phone and I'm like, oh no, oh no, no, no. And then I put the phone in my pocket and I'll get back to you. Have we become in the world, no wonder the world is going after love is love and cancel culture and so forth because we as Christians, we don't model friendship very well. You know, we, 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 we don't show people the true love of Jesus Christ because why? We, we, we try to Say to our people, you know what? Come as you are, but fix yourself. <laughs> Proverbs 17 verse 17. A friend loves at all times. A brother is born for a time of adversity. Wouldn't it be great to have a friend where you can go on missions with? Where you can spend time at church without feeling worried what they might think of the message? Wouldn't it be great to have a friend where you can serve together, be excited to do stuff together? 
Whether you have a friend who can kick your backside when you do something stupid. Whether he loves you enough to hold you accountable and not play the not my circus, not my monkey rule on you. But social media has defined friendships for us. I want to speak against that today. I'm not against social media. I'm the social media stalker. You should know by now, everything you post on Facebook will be used in a sermon. So I'm sorry if that happens. And my wife and children always freak out when I preach because they don't know what's coming up sometimes in our lives. I'm not sharing anything of the family today. We live in a world where more likes, more scrolling is our friendship. TikTok is famous for one reason, because you post 10 second videos. People get bored after 10 seconds. Have you noticed this? And the reason I noticed TikTok, you have an analytic thing that you can see how long people are watching your video. Anything above 30 seconds and you're out. Why? Because we don't have meaningful friendships. Facebook is telling us and social media is telling us to go up and up and up and up and and share and share and share and share. And that's it. You see, Facebook mustn't, social media mustn't be the replacement, but it must be the supplement. Share your Bible verses. Share your faith. I love doing that. Do that. But it's not, nothing online can replace godly friendships offline. Nothing. I want to tell you that. Nothing can do that. Why? Because yeah, when you're there, you are present. You have to be with your friends. You have to speak. You have to listen to their body language and so forth. And it makes it real. We need to work on our friendships. You know, uh, um, what I like about the inner circle and what Jesus done is that actually he made work of having an inner circle. And something you might not know is that Jesus had 12 disciples, but he had three people in his inner circle that went everywhere with him. And I was like thinking, okay, cool. Yeah, Jesus says life, we cannot do life alone. He is God. He doesn't need people. He doesn't need anybody to help him. But he chose 12 disciples knowing what they're going to do to him or knowing what they're going to do in the future because he is God, and he chose 12 disciples. And in those 12 disciples, he was like, whoa, 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 I need three people to be with me always. And if you're a Christ follower today, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to live the same life. Why are we here on every Sunday? And I was so mesmerized about how Jesus did this, and I want to share this with you today. It says this in Luke 5, verse 1 to 11. As the crowd was pressing on, on Jesus to hear God's word, he was standing by Lake Gennesaret. He saw two boats at the edge of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. He got into the boats, which belonged to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the land. Then he sat down and was teaching the crowds from the boat. If any of you have a boat and you want us to come and preach, let me know. We'll come to the boat. (laughs) When they were finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deeper water and let your nets Lay down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, you have worked hard all night long. Oh, sorry, we have worked all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they did this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets began to tear. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full it began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me because I'm a sinful man, Lord. For he and all those with him were amazed at the cash of fish they have taken. And so it were James and John and Zebedee's sons who were with Simon's partners. Don't be afraid, Jesus told Simon. From now on you will be catching people. Then they brought the boats, brought the boats to land, left everything, and followed him. You need to understand that there Jesus chose his own inner circle. But he didn't do it on a whimsical decision. No, we could see that Jesus had modeled this small group of very close friends. They actually had some conversations before Jesus told them, hey, follow me. We see it in John's baptism in John 1 verse 40. They were called with him to uh, Galilee in John 2 verse 2 and into Judea, John 4 verse 3. They were not called to him at that stage to be constantly with him. But here we see he said, hey, come, follow me. Jesus was intentional looking for his inner circle. Guys, you know what? You need to be intentional and seeking your circle introverts you're going to freak out now because now you can't wait for your inner circle to come to you you need to go and find your inner circle but the problem is the inner circles we like is the people who talk like us act like us smell like us speak like us and live like us the problem is there's no growth in that scenario because you're all the same you need to have an inner circle where, we can, where people can walk with you and pray with you and spend time with you, but you have to seek that inner circle. We see that after that, they, these three men, Peter, James, and John, saw miracles that no one else saw. 
When I went to Jorius' house to bring his daughter back from the dead for the miraculous transfiguration of Jesus, he only took these men with him. Brings me to my first point. For you to have an inner circle, you need to be intentional and selective who your inner circle must be. You have to be intentional and selective. We cannot come to a place when we have our inner circle to say, we have friends that says, as long as you're happy. As long as your heart feels at peace. Your truth is your truth. I hate that word. It's not the truth. God's truth is the only truth. We need friends that hold us accountable. But Christians, what we have done is, New Life Church, what we have done is people that don't look like us, act like us, talk like us, smell like us, and live like us, we've cast it out into, a, into the abyss. Why? Because we only want people that look like us, and speak like us, and talk like us. No wonder the world is looking for, for love, and friendship, and all, all the wrong places, because they don't find acceptance in the local body of Christ. I want to ask you, who's in your inner circle today? Do you even have an inner circle today? You know, Proverbs 27, verse 5 to 6 says, Better is an open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Now, men, you won't get this because you don't get too many kisses like women do. But yeah, understand this. Just leave this on. It is greater to have a friend that calls you out on your remorse for the English people, for your stuff that you're doing wrong, than, a friend, uh, than an enemy who multiplies your kisses. When you are in a bad place, do your friend take you more negative or do they try to lift you up? When you're in a situation where you need prayer, do they give prayer to you or are they calling you out? We need to understand that we need to have genuine friendships and that we can do correction on that. And also friendships are meant to manifest love and devotion. It also means you cannot do love alone. Proverbs 27 verse 9, oil and incense brings joy to the heart and the sweetness of a friend is better than self-counsel. It means get help. Men, if I can say something to you today, we are too proud and too happy. I just almost even said we don't do the BFF. I love that you said that. We don't do the best friends forever. Why? Because we're men. And then when I speak to men, I say, how are you doing? I am fine. And I'm thinking you're lying because the Holy Spirit is telling me you are not fine. Or when I ask men, how should they be going? No, it's been great and going great. We, not, we, we try to own something that we're not supposed to own. And then when it says here in the Bible, hey, be, a sweetness of a friend is better than self-counsel, the Bible Bible is telling you to say, get help. Get men into your circle that can pray with you and lift you up. Ladies, you're great at creating circles. There are so many lady circles. I've lost count how many people we have in lady circles. But men, we need to come to the game. You know, I posted something on Facebook. Men, it's time for you to stand up. Sit in the front of the church. Raise your hands and become the prophet of your house like God has called you to be. But for you to do that, you need to understand you need help. Because if you're broken, your family is going to be broken. I love men's ministry. I love circle ministry because I see the healing that happens when the power of the Holy Spirit is there. But it means also when you have a circle or an inner circle, they mustn't become a gossip group circle. And you know what I'm talking about. Let me use a few examples. Brian Houston from Hillsong Church. He fell from ministry. He did some stuff wrong. We call a spade a spade here. But I've never seen in my life so many Christians that I know, that I follow, that I listen to, condemning Brian Houston to the pits of aloneness, that he is a false prophet, that the mega church is falling, that the true colors is coming out. And I'm thinking, how is Christians showing this to the world? Because can I remind you of David? David, King David went to a woman, impregnated her, which wasn't his wife, and then he killed the husband. Can I imagine if we had him on social media? What would you do? What would you do? Peter, Peter basically denied Jesus three times. He was caught out in a lie three times. Would we allow him here? Would we be his inner circle friends? I shared a picture on Facebook the other week, and I want to share this with you guys. And I think this is what the social media world is doing. If social media wasn't Jesus' times, local carpenter with extremist views continues to spread this information deemed harmful by religious experts. This is where we live. This is where we live. Can I ask you, can I ask you this? Johnny versus Amber. And now I'm going to convict you. I'm sorry, but this is the truth. Amber was caught out in a lie following the courts. How many of us shared, slandered, laughed, 
looked at that trial. You know, Peter was also a liar. And God used him mightily. You know, with the Amber versus Johnny thing, nobody won. Everybody lost. But the world, we are so good as Christians sometimes that the world suck us in so much into the worldly stuff, we forget about the Christianity. We would walk into TikTok or on Facebook because it's anonymous. We would comment something nasty. But because you know why? Because we don't have to be Christians on Facebook. Guys, if you have an inner circle, they have to call you out on this. I was shocked to see it. Look, and I think my TikTok was full Amber Johnny, Amber Johnny music playing uh, and, and people just judging and hoeing each other. And yes, she was caught out in a lie, but the way we treat her, that's not Christian at all. No wonder we don't have Christian friends. When I ask you, are you a gossip group? <laughs> or are you helping other people to come out? Brings, brings me to my second point. Friends must be constant with each other at all times. You cannot change your attitude towards your friend or your inner circle on a whim open thing. You know, we block people easily. We unfriend them on Facebook. Some of us are even smarter. We don't unfriend them. We unfollow them because we still want to see what they're doing. And then when they get life right, we don't celebrate with them. We wish actually it gotten a little bit worse. I want to ask you in your inner circle here today, are you constant in love and guidance? Now, I'm a visual learner. I don't do books so well. I try to read books. It's a big thing for me. I watch the movie. So I'm going to give you a visual example of how a circle must be consistent. But I need three men on the stage. I'm not sexist. Well, I'm not asking for women. You'll see why. But can I have three men? Just so you work here, you have to come up, unfortunately. Can I get two other men, please? There we go. Barry, thank you. One other man. Come, Donald. There we go. Men is so shy. I don't know. If I said three women, it would be furry here. Right? Am I right? <laughs> Just stand for me in the front. Come closer to the light. There we go. Just stand there. To the edge, please. To the edge. There we go. Now, when we're in our inner circle of three friends, I have seen when life is easy, it's easy to be an inner circle. When we see the fruit of the Spirit, we see gifting show up. We see each other pray for each other. We see bad it out just more. Listen, brother, the Holy Spirit told me about this. And you're like, oh, it's great. You know exactly what I'm doing. But, and it goes well, so well, that your circle is just holding hands and singing Kumbaya. Not asking you to hold hands. But what happens when a brother falls? That's why I didn't want ladies. We do this. Smile, just more. We take a photo and we share it with our group. You see, what happens in our circles when it's not consistent is these two men are doing what now to just more? They're looking down. What is just more trying to do? He's looking up. But what happens, excuse me, in our godly circles, instead of taking photos and sharing, and I told you so, and unfollowing him, it's their men's job to push him back up to where he's supposed to be. Do you understand that? You can stay a little while. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 12, and if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. It means when we push, when a man gets fallen into sin or fallen into a situation, we have to be quick to help him out. A three-quarter strand is not easily broken. Friendships, your friendships will last if it's a godly inner circle because the Bible says so. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what psychologist says. I don't care what your friend says. If the Bible says it's true, then I believe it. And that's why we need inner circles in this church. Because if one man falls, sorry, just some more, <laughs> and they look down on him, and they start skinnering about him, and they start judging him, what happens? Sorry, Barry, I was just, I was hoping you could make it. <laughs> there we go, young man. What happens when all three of them fall in the inner circle? What happens? The whole circle is done. And then you fall into the world's idea because then cancel culture, blocking and unfollow happens. Thank you, gentlemen. You may take a seat. We need to get them out 
in prayer and love and help and all this. And you might say, Louis, but how do we do that? Well, there's a perfect example in the Bible where we can see what happens to somebody in Jesus' inner circle. And I want you to remember this now because this was the aha moment for me even. Jesus Peter was part of Jesus' inner circle. He wasn't just a disciple. He was part of the inner circle. And it says this in uh, Peter 14, verse 28 to 33. Lord, if it is you, Peter answered him, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But then he saw the strength of the wind and he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, immediately Jesus reached out his hand, caught hold of him and said to him, you of little faith, why do you doubt? Here's the accountability. When they got into the boat, the wind ceased and then those in the boat worshipped him and said, truly, you are the son of God. Jesus didn't go when Peter fell out of the boat and say, hang on. Let's share this first. Jesus didn't say, hey, you know what? Let me think about it. Jesus didn't go, mm, I'm not sure. No, look at you. You're supposed to know me. He didn't block him out of his inner circle. He didn't let him drown bloop, 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 and said, you're canceled in my life. He immediately helped him up and then he convict, uh, uh, hold him accountable. Do you have such little faith? Christians, if there's something we need to do, New Life Church online community, if there's something we need to do is we must stop trying to reprimand the person first before they help. Because what did Jesus do? He first helped him out of the water and then hold him accountable. You know what we do as Christians? We hold people accountable and then we try to help them out of the water. It's the wrong way around and that has to stop. Jesus didn't condemn him and say, you don't believe in me, drown, silly man. I'll find another disciple. I'll find number of somebody else in my inner circle. He helped him out, but he held him accountable. And then Peter, Peter didn't get all proud. You know, Peter was a very intense man. I love Peter. He's pretty much like me. Cut ears off, no worries, say a thing as it is. <laughs> Peter here, Peter here didn't puff himself up and proud and pride as men we do sometimes. When there's correction, he said, truly you are the Son of God. That's the power of an inner circle right there. Now you need to understand, after that, Peter still denied Jesus three times. He still made a mess of things. And the thing that Jesus did, is he knew that this was gonna happen. And he still used Peter mightily. Your inner circle is gonna fail you. Your people in your inner circle is not going to make the right decisions all the time. But instead of condemning them, and I told you so, help them out first and then hold them accountable. And then your, the people in your circle, Holy Spirit filled, will see, hey, this correction is biblical. We live in a snowflake world where everybody can be offended over everything. Yeah. Silly stuff, F1. If you're a Lewis Hamilton fan, the world hates you. If you're a Max Verstappen fan, everybody loves you. Johnny versus Amber. Everybody loved Johnny. Everybody hated Amber. That's not Christianity. Jesus loves them the same. So in our inner circle, we need to love the people the same. You know, in Acts 2 verse 14, after the day of, in the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down, Peter was the one who gave the first sermon in the day of Pentecost. Can you imagine if Jesus said to Peter when, you know what, you drowned, you're out, or you denied me three times, you're out. Can you imagine if Jesus did that in his inner circle? Acts 2 verse 14, Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and proclaimed to them, fellow Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem, let this be known to you and pay attention to my words. Yeah, Peter was giving the first sermon in the Acts 2 church on the day of Pentecost and he was preaching and, and talking and it says this at the end, at, uh, 37 to 41, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each of you in the name of the Jesus Christ for your forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord God, our God will call. With many other words, he testified and strongly urged them, be saved from this corrupt generation. New life, church, we're living in a corrupt generation. So those who accepted his message were baptized and about that day, 3,000 people were added to them. Can you imagine if Peter wasn't part of Jesus' inner circle anymore? 
the ripple effect that would have had into the world. You know, last Sunday we did Pentecost Sunday. And I was in the online forum waiting to interview Ryan after this message. And as the people came out, I thought the church was finished. Church was done. But it was people who wanted to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. So much so that in this experience, the chapel was too small. We had to take them to the minor hall. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. Like I have no, I won't say never, but I haven't seen such a move in Whitbank for a long, 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 long time. Why? Because Peter was obedient back in the day of Pentecost and also Jesus still used him. So if Jesus uses people that are failing, that are lying, that doesn't trust him, why are we canceling people that is lying and failing with us? It's not the Jesus way. It's the world's way. We're not supposed to live life alone. We cannot do it alone. Acts 2, verse 42 to 47. They were devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled in awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common, sold their possessions and property, distributed it to all as the, any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to the meeting, together in the temple, and broke bread from house to house. They ate food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to them, to their number, those who were being saved. That's our vision for this year. This is why we have circles. This is why churches have small group communities. Because of what Peter did in obedience and that Jesus had a plan and a purpose for Peter's life. No matter what he's done in his past, God used him in a mighty way. There are people in your inner circle that are broken, that doesn't know what to do next, and you cannot chase them out. You actually have to pull them closer. Jesus helped immediately. You cannot do life alone. Jesus was the son of God. He was on earth, and he didn't do life alone. He had 12 disciples. He had three people in his inner circle. For you to think that you can do life alone is the devil's lie to you today. Because Jesus didn't even walk alone on this earth. He walked with people. I want to ask you once again, who's in your inner circle? I firmly believe the, 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 the antidote to depression is circles, inner circles. I believe the antidote to anxiety is inner circles. I believe the antidote to better business decisions is in circles. I believe stronger marriages are based on inner circles, not because of the circle, but because of the Holy Spirit that's present in that circle. And when somebody falls, we show them what the world does different, what we do different to the world. We show them that you are loved just as you are. We don't always get it right. I am part of this. Don't, don't mistake and think I'm perfect. I am not. I'm not even close. Ask my wife, nearly fee. But at the end of the day, we need to say, hey, we're going to help people, like, not like the world helps them, but what, what God wants us to do. And do everything in love. We're not persecuting people with the gospel. We are saving people with the gospel. Don't use the Bible and say, you know what? You're naughty, naughty man. I don't want you to see in my life. You're going, no, that's not what we do. We open it up and we say, you know, Jesus loves you. He wants to be, thank you, Dorota. And, and I want you to, to, to say, hey, come and join it. But there is also accountability in here. Confess your sins to a brother. Sisters, this includes you also. But not that the hair salon into one or two two sisters or one or two brothers and say, you know, I, have, I, I think I'm going to cheat on my wife because of this emotional affair and they can pray with you to come against it. You know, I think I'm drinking again. You know what, brother, I understand you have a drinking problem. Let's pray about it. Let's, let's go out with you rather or whatever the case should be. Not like I told you so or she was good for a second husband or a third wife or whatever we believe. That's the world. We as Christians show accountability in love. I've lost my place. In closing, do you have an inner circle? If not, pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal them to, do, to you and you go out and you go look for him. Don't just choose on the first whim. We saw Jesus had a few conversations first before he chose them. And if you have an inner circle, I'm going to ask you, is your inner circle lifting you up or helping you in your gossip? Because if they're helping you in your gossip, I want to kindly say today with love and care, Call that person out. Ask for repentance and forgiveness and start over. 
But if they don't want to change their ways, remove yourself from that circle. Don't say love them, but remove yourself away from that circle. We are in this world, guys, but we're not of this world. But sometimes we live in this world because we're in this world. And that's not what God has called us to do. I love how Jesus and Peter's story just blew my mind open on what inner circles looks like. So I am trying my hardest not to give up on people or not to tell people, you know what, that's enough. I'm trying to do what the Bible tells us. And I'm not perfect. I'm learning. I'm still changing my life around and so forth. It's all a journey we're all on. But I want to ask you today, is your circle or your group of friends life-giving? Or are they just using you for the good times? If they are life-giving, carry on. If you don't have a circle, let us know. We'll help you. An inner circle, not a circle group, an inner circle, people that you can hold you accountable and walk a journey with you and so forth. You know where I've met all my inner circle people? At this church. When I was serving in the projection back in the day. Wow, that was many years ago. When I was a kid's life leader. Believe it or not, I was a kid's life leader. I don't know how they allowed me to be a kid's life leader. But <laughs> when I was serving at Elevate before, way before just almost time. When I was a, a, a small group leader, when I was doing courses and so forth. I've met my friends in my inner circle here. And I spend time and get to know them and so forth. Men, we need to come to a point where we can share with other men what's happening in our lives. I'm speaking to the men specifically now. You are too much holding on to stuff that's not supposed to be holding on to. And if you are broken, your family is going to be broken. Try to stop being brave. Brave is a movie. It's not an attitude men should have at this moment. Come with humility before God and He will give you the healing. Get people around you that can love you and hold you accountable. And then don't puff yourself up. Say, you know what? I think you are right, because that's how true growth happens. Lord, I thank you for each and every person here today. I thank you for the wisdom that you've given us in your word. I thank you that we can see that community is important to you, that inner circle is important to you. I thank you for the examples you've shown us in your word. Lord, I pray for wisdom today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just move with us and tell us what we need to do for the next step to find our inner circle. Lord, I pray for the hard conversations. I pray for when people might be fearful and calling their friends out. I come with, in Jesus' name today and say that you will give them a, a peace that surpasses all understanding because we're bringing our prayers and petitions to you today. I pray that we will just continue to love you like no one else, that we will follow your example as much as we humanly possibly can. But Holy Spirit, give us the power, the wisdom, and the authority to walk in humbleness with you. I thank you, Jesus, that you've shown us that even though you're the son of the Father, Father God, that you didn't walk alone, that you had people around him. I thank you that you had people around you, and you even knew that they were going to betray you or deny you, and you still called them friends and disciples. I pray that we will have the same attitude than what you have for people. Lord, I come against our mindset into this world where we just act and walk like the world. I pray that you will remove us from that. Holy Spirit, remind us. When we do things like this, I pray that we will show love to people. I pray that we will remember, as you saved Peter from the water, immediately you helped him out and then hold him accountable in love. I pray that, that that image of Peter walking on the water will never escape our mind. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your hope. And I thank you. You're the cure for everything in this world that is wrong. If we just choose to accept you and walk with you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.